Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We are here at the Technical Forum and my name is Miro Boakas. Thank you for being with us. Please have a seat, um, have some drinks, some coffees. It's all on the house. Uh, I would also like to give a warm welcome to our guests watching the live streaming online. Our next speaker will talk about test procedures for solid oxide cells implementation in international standards. Please welcome with me on stage researchers from SOCTES Q&A Consortium, Stephen McPhail. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and uh, good afternoon to you ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to accompany the digestion of your lunch today by talking a little bit and pondering the importance of stabilized processes and standardized procedures towards the functioning of organisms and organizations and industries and activity in general. So this is particularly important for fuel cells and solid oxide fuel cells in particular since we're trying to move out of the realm of um, good ideas and just potential and, uh, and, and possibilities into real hardcore industrial um, efficiency and robustness and cost effectiveness and consumer uh, reliability. So. Um, I've been part of this uh, great consortium which was funded by the fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking that was looking at how to standardize the way that we test and we characterize and we qualify solid oxide cell stacks. And um, I'll run you through the presentation uh, by first having a quick look at what these solid oxide cells do and why they're particularly interesting for the evolving energy panorama. And then take a brief detour into why the aspect of regulations, codes and standards are so important and then bring these two um, uh, visions together, trying to address a gap that we found and that we think that we have uh, initiated the solution of. Um, if you're interested in more about either uh, of these topics, please visit us at our booth, uh, which is over there in front of the public forum podium. And, um, and we'll be glad to tell you a bit more about it. So, um, yeah, just for the, those of you who are not perfectly familiar with the uh, solid oxide cell technology, it is, again, a device which is uh, electrochemical. So we have a fuel side and an air side. And when we want to generate power, the fuel um, uh, uh, releases its electrons, which generates the electricity and ionizes the oxygen on the other side. Here you have it again, in case you didn't follow it. And the uh, oxygen then manages to uh, travel through the gas tight electrolyte uh, in an ionized way. And there, the electrons are released again by the oxidation of the hydrogen. So this is a very efficient and clean process. And the beauty of this particular combination of materials and, um, uh, and components allows us also to reverse the process. So what if we have electricity to spare and we want to capture it and generate maybe fuel out of it? Uh, well, we take the same, exactly the same uh, the device. And instead of feeding hydrogen on the one side, which we want to generate, we feed water, which we have plenty of. The uh, uh, renewable electricity generates the reaction uh, decomposing the water into hydrogen and again the ionized uh, oxygen ions can travel to the other side where they are expelled in the form of oxygen. So these can be used both for generating hydrogen out of electricity and for generating oxygen. Um, so this specific technology, the solid oxide fuel cell or solid oxide electrolysis cell technology can then be applied in various uh, fields of industry. Um, for the power generation part, we can think both of stationary applications where we're trying to generate electricity and heat at high efficiencies from any scale from down to a kilowatt to any kind of industrial plant scale. Um, we can also implement these devices in mobile applications. I'm thinking especially of uh, auxiliary power units for, for example, trucks or other larger vehicles that have a large requirement for onboard storage, uh, onboard power use, for which wants to avoid using idling engines, which are noisy and polluting. Um, 
swiveling, uh, switching around the, um, uh, the, the functionality of the uh, fuel cell to electrolysis. We can, as I already mentioned, store the power in the form of, uh, of fuel. And we can also buffer the power by storing it in a fuel that then we use uh, to generate electricity when there is a lack of electricity. So a very uh, flexible technology that now we want to really get into the uh, uh, energy needs of today. But to do this, we need to package the, uh, the uh, assessment and the uh, comparison of these technologies because the uh, interesting thing about this technology is that it's very um, fertile. The industries are uh, many. They are distributed over the whole of Europe, Japan, uh, China, America. So there's many different manufacturers who all have a certain uh, specific, specific technology. And in order to be able to compare between these different variations, varieties of uh, solid oxide fuel cells, we need to have a common uh, benchmark and we need to have a kind of a common uh, assessment procedure by which to uh, compare the different technologies. So that is where uh, standards come out. And this is a, a graphical example of how the industrial uh, paradigm of generating a product for the consumer is, um, uh, relies a lot on its own uh, know-how and on its um, uh, targets for uh, satisfying customer needs. But in order to tap into a larger knowledge base of the specific target, whether it is safety or efi efficiency or reliability, there you want to be able to make use of a larger pool of knowledge. And the standards box brings these two uh, targets together. So by having a um, generally applicable standards for uh, efficiency or uh, reliability of your product, you can, the consumer, the end user, can rely on the fact that his product uh, relies on the best possible knowledge. Uh, in the uh, European framework, this uh, is uh, um, most uh, commonly known by the CE mark, which doesn't stand for Chinese export, but for uh, compliance to European directives. And uh, this basically uh, means that any product that is in circulation um, uh, in Europe needs to have this compliance um, uh, certificate. And this compliance certificate means that uh, the product responds to certain directives which are quite generic. So they refer to efficiency uh, or, or safety. And it is often difficult for manufacturers of very specific products to uh, interpret these, um, these directives and the essential requirements that these directives um, force you to comply with. This is why we have the certain standardization development bodies like CEN or CENELEC in Europe, but also ISO and IEC uh, at international level, who have the mandate from the policymakers to develop standards, which is really just a tool in order to make sure that your product, if it is made according to these standards, automatically complies to these European directives. So the standard development organizations package the knowledge into uh, usable standards, which then generate the presumption of conformity to the directive. And that means you can market your product. So the, for, the Euro, for Europe, the EN standards usually adopt standards that have been developed from higher order international bodies. And that is what we have been working for as well, because for the uh, fuel cell technology, the IEC, the International Electrotechnical Commission, is the main standardization body, um, which uh, was founded in 1999 as uh, one of the many technical committees of this uh, organization that looks at standardization. Uh, this is just to show you briefly what the setup is of this technical committee, and it's basically to show you that um, uh, the different working groups that develop standards reflect the different possible applications. And we started from a standard that was available for a solid oxide fuel cell, only power generation tests, and we've now initiated an activity on these reversing, the reversing capability of these fuel cells. Uh, so yeah, that is, uh, has been done in our project. Uh, this is what then what it ultimately looks like. For the SOFC, we have this, uh, this technical specification that was issued in 2014, but only looks at uh, standardizing procedures for testing and qualifying solid oxide fuel cells. 
and we are now moving to uh, finding standards also for electrolysis mode or reversing mode because we found in the literature that there was no uh, procedures anywhere, not from international standardization bodies, but neither from uh, the point of view of industries. In-house procedures are also uh, used, but none of those exist now for electrolysis. So we've set to work the last three years and we've done a, a very schematic and methodological assessment of what the test environment is and what the stack does. And uh, Eva will be telling us a bit more about the results that come from that tomorrow morning at 10.20 in this same place. So you'll be able to learn a bit more about the uh, challenges that we've had to actually make a reliable and a robust procedure that you can uh, get meaningful results from. Um, what we've done uh, in the end is uh, we've managed to develop very packaged, well packaged procedures for specific um, uh, applications, both power generation and uh, power storage. Um, we have not only conceived them and defined them, we've also validated them experimentally using more than 20 or 30 stacks uh, over six, seven uh, research centers. And this has led us to a very um, uh, comprehensive uh, understanding of the different parameters that influence the performance that you uh, come up uh, with at the end of the test. So the, um, the procedures will all be downloadable for free. They're for your use. We hope that everybody who's into testing and characterizing and qualifying solid oxides uh, stacks will start using them. We hope to have provided a very user-friendly uh, package of, uh, of test modules, uh, which you can also combine to different test programs according to the uh, uh, application that you're interested in. And this will then be able to say, I've tested my stack or my different stacks according to this procedure, and everybody will know how they have been tested and compare the performance of the different stacks. Um, so this is the website. Just remember the acronym of the project and you'll be able to find our, um, uh, our procedures, uh, which are already being taken up in a number of um, European projects uh, in order to have this, uh, this common benchmark of um, performance assessment. So um, that's it from me. Um, again, I just mentioned uh, to um, raise a bit of awareness about the importance of standardization to transfer technology from the laboratory to industry. And um, um, yeah, please visit our booth to get more information. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Are there any questions right now regarding the research? <laughs> Not yet. I, I was wondering, um, now you give it um, out for, for usage or that uh, other projects could be um, done on the base of what you've developed. Um, do you expect any, any feedback or do you know, are you in touch with all those new projects that are based on what you produced or absolutely yeah yeah it's um, it helps a lot that all of us are partners in these projects so we can uh, uh, promote the use of these procedures within those projects it's also something that the uh, joint undertaking which is the main European body for the interest of the fuel source and hydrogen community in Europe uh, is insisting for us to develop harmonized procedures and use them in all the funded projects. So we are doing something that is very structural for the development of the fuel cell technology in Europe. And do you expect uh, further projects done by you um, after you get feedback and you, you can further develop something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will probably need to set up some kind of feedback platform so that we get, obviously we've been testing it a lot inside our own team but there's always new aspects that will come up and so we'll, uh, we'll make sure that where you download the procedures you can also put in feed in comments. Okay. Great, thank you very much for this interesting presentation. Thank you. If you have further questions later on or just want to have a chat, visit their booth D66. It's right next to the public forum. Easy to find. Thank you one more time. Thank you. So the next presentation will continue in about five minutes. Please stay with us, have a coffee after lunch, have some refreshments. It will be regarding hydrogen, the new energy fuel for tomorrow's vehicles uh, by Anna Kletzka from the BMW Group. I'm very much looking forward to this presentation and see you in a few minutes. Thank you.